The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has warned that the myriad of challenges caused by Western insecurity and crisis in the energy sector may subdue the gross domestic product growth projections for Nigeria in 2022. Now, President of the LCCI, Dr. Michael Alawale Cole, laments that the Petroleum Industry Act now seems to be in a state of limbo. He says the worst insecurity challenges in many parts of the country are another serious threat to the agricultural and manufacturing value chain, which is capable of reducing production and contracting these sectors. Also, how much progress can a health provider make in the society if it is constantly confronted with the challenge of a broken supply chain, chaotic distribution channels, epileptic delivery of quality medicines and pharmaceutical supplies? Not much. Well, this is the reality that many healthcare providers in Sub-Saharan Africa have to deal with as they work towards an efficient healthcare delivery system. We'll be looking at fixing the supply chain challenge in pharmaceuticals on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Well, first off, let's take you through some of the biggest economic stories in Nigeria that trended this week. Here are the highlights. No fewer than 2,256 depositors have lodged complaints against their banks with the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. It's on transactions totaling 368.9 billion naira and $428.7, and that is 177.05 billion naira on the account. The Institute, however, said it had been able to resolve 2,206 of the reported cases. It also said that the total amount awarded on the cases were 30.65 billion naira and 19.48 million dollars since the inception of the tribunal. The price of liquefied petroleum gas (LPG), otherwise known as cooking gas, has risen by 25.7% in the last three weeks as 12.5 kg now sells at 8,800 naira from 7,000 naira. Findings reveal that 1 kg rose by 11% to 1,000 naira from 900 naira, 3 kg rose by 10% to 2,200 from 2,000 naira, 6 kg rose by 15.8% to 4,400 naira from 3,800 naira, while 12.5 kg rose by 25.7% to 8,800 naira from 7,000 naira. Meanwhile, the liquefied petroleum gas retailers branch of Nupeng had called on the government to come up with a clear policy direction for the development of LPG in the country to forestall the consistent rise in the price of the product. The Nigeria Customs Service, NCS, has commenced the implementation of the new version of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS Common External Tariff, CET 2022-2026 on imported vehicles. According to the NCS, the migration from the old CET 2017-2021 to to the new version, which is in line with the World Customs, which is in line with the World Customs Organization, WCO, takes immediate effect. The customs spokesman, Timmy Bomodi, said the new rate applied to both new and used vehicles imported into the country. New and used vehicles are subjected to National Automotive Council, NAC, level of 20 and 15 percent respectively. The service also confirmed the reduction of import duty on imported vehicles from 35 to 20 percent. Now, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has predicted that Niger's total debt stock was expected to hit 45.86 trillion naira by December 2022. According to the president of the LCCI, who spoke at a press briefing on the state of the nation, the country's debt stock was expected to increase following the federal government's plan to borrow an additional 1.6 trillion naira, while the 2022 debt target for domestic borrowing was pegged at 2.57 trillion naira. Here are the major highlights.
government needs to look for ways to resolve the lingering fuel supply crisis by increasing, in the meanwhile, importation to meet growing demand, which is putting pressure on diesel and fuel prices. It has also become imperative now that Nigeria needs to have reserves for this capital for critical commodities like fuel, which can be accessed to meet sudden crashes in supply like we now find ourselves. Number two, we have always advocated for the removal of fuel subsidies and that such rescued funds be diverted to subsidize the production of goods and services in the face of the rising cost of manufacturing in our country. Manufacturing people, they pay most of the cost that government should have provided in services to them. Number three, Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, should embark on easing the economy while keeping a tab on controlling rising prices. Credit to the private sector should increase and be targeted to supply growth and export promotion, promotion sectors. Four, the growing uncertainty is driven by the war in Ukraine, degenerating insecurity crisis in our country, and difficulties around the sourcing of forex for the importation of raw materials. Five, CBN needs to initiate a gradual transition to a unified exchange rate system and allow for a market reflective exchange rate. That is what we've been asking for. The currency market is still beset with persisting liquidity challenges evidenced in the wide premium between the NAFEX and the parallel market rates. The federal government plans to add 6.3 naira, naira, naira new debts to the current debt stock, which will push the country's total debt stock to 45.86 trillion naira by the end of the current year. We are likely to have a higher debt service to revenue ratio if revenue levels do not increase with great importance. With import continue to outpace exports, the trade deficit is therefore expected to widen in the full year that we are in now. And that may put more pressure on Forex Looking ahead to this current year, we expect crude oil to sustain its dominance in the Nigerian export, while manufactured imports will most likely dominate the country's import bill. We anticipate sustained trade deficit in agriculture, manufacturers' goods, and raw materials goods this year. The persistent Russia-Ukraine war has triggered a positive oil price shock with spillover effects on operating costs that are not directly 
to do with raw materials. Also, inflation in countries that are not directly engaged with the war. Nigeria is not in any way an exception. As prices of goods and services are moving northward with the potential implication of shrinking production of goods and services. The worsening security challenges in many parts of the country are another serious threat to the agricultural and manufacturing value chain in our country, which is capable of reducing production and contracting these sectors. In the above conditions, if they persist, production volumes will be impacted negatively by a raw material supply chain. Disruptions caused by the war in Ukraine, the rising cost of diesel and other internal security crises, job losses are also very likely due to constrained production and disrupted supply chains. All of these will likely depress growth potentials in the second quarter of this year. The agricultural sector showed some evidence of, Im of impacts from heightening insecurity and lingering supply chain disruptions as it recorded real growth of 3.58% year on year, an increase of 0.16% points when compared the quarter four of the year 2020, and an increase of 2.3 percent points from quarter three of last year, which recorded a growth rate of 1.22 percent. However, the sector contributed 26.84 percent to overall GDP in real times in quarter three of last year. This is lower, of course, than the contribution that was made in quarter four of the year 2020 and lower to the quarter three of the year 2021, which was 26.95% and 29.94% respectively. The manufacturing sector recorded rate GDP growth of 2.28% year on year in the fourth quarter of the year 2021, higher than the figure for quarter four of the year preceding, by 3.80 points and higher by 2.01 points for the quarter three of the year 2021. The growth rate of the sector on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis stood at 3.57%. In terms of rate contribution to GDP, the manufacturing sector contributed 8.46% in quarter four of last year, lower, of course, than 8.60% that it did in the quarter four of the year 2020, and lower than the 8.96 percent it recorded in quarter three of the previous year.
Now, a Nigerian-based e-health pharmaceutical distribution startup is expanding access to quality medicines for healthcare providers and rebuilding the supply chain financing in the pharmaceutical industry. Let's welcome Dr. Chibuzo Okbara, co-founder of Drugstock, as he joins us on the conversation of improving the pharmaceutical supply chain. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Okbara. Thank you, Justin. It's lovely to be here. All right, let's talk about the pharmaceutical supply chain. There seems to be some uh, bottlenecks in the sector. Can you walk us through some of them? So the Nigerian and sub-Saharan African um, pharmaceutical sector and supply space is plagued by um, issues due to fragmentation of the supply chain. Um, so this fragmentation has led to three key issues. Um, the first being um, issues around access. Um, the second issues around pricing. Um, anybody can, can, can uh, if you look at the price in the urban and rural areas, you see that there's a massive difference. And this is due to the bro broken supply chain, the pro products passing through multiple middlemen. And the third issue, which is pertinent and quite um, worrying, is the influx of um, fake and substandard medication into the supply chain, um, anywhere between 10 and 30% of the products in the supply chain, depending on where you get them, might be counterfeited or substandard due to poor storage uh, uh, conditions. So these are some challenges that uh, providers, patients face as they try to navigate um, the system. These are some of the things we tackle as a, as a pharma tech company. All right, so how do we begin to expand access uh, you know, to quality medicines for healthcare providers and rebuild the supply chain financing? So what we do at um, Drugstop is basically um, leverage our pharmaceutical platform, which is a tech uh, platform that connects manufacturers of good quality pharmaceutical products to hospitals and pharmacies. And essentially what we are doing is um, building a bulletproof system where manufacturers can be sure that their products can be accessed by people who need them. Um, your typical, in your typical system, a pharmacy, for instance, might um, see a total of 50,000 patients over the course of um, a year. But by leveraging our platform, this pharmacy is able to drive their operations up smoothly to go beyond this 50,000 to as much as 100, 150,000 patients, creating more access for people um, doing better pricing, you know, when they leverage our, our system, they're also able to, you know, take advantage of our supply chain financing solutions, which enable them to um, provide value for their patients cost-effectively in quality um, um, ways that benefit the patient um, at the last mile immensely. All right, let's talk about um, the use of technology in all of this now because and that um, seems to be the future of uh, how um, supplies and um, demand and supply you know, are actually met. How would you see that technology is actually done in, this, in the sense of uh, getting um, the, those who need these drugs and of course the suppliers of these drugs together, bringing them to a platform? So thank you for that great question, Justin. I mean, technology is a great enabler as we've seen post um, COVID, we've seen that technology has driven a lot of the, um, the movement in the space in healthcare, as well as um, a lot of the space in, in, in the industries and other similar industries. You know, I have a theory that, you know, five years from now, you're not going to have technology companies. You're just going to have all companies using technology. Um, and, and companies that don't will be moribund. I, I think even if you go to hardcore manufacturing, you hear them talking about SCADA systems and things like that. And very soon, those SCADA systems will be interconnected in such a way that the Internet of Things will also be moving towards uh, making production um, even easier. So from that perspective, I think there's no escape in technology. Now, how do you make technology work for you? And this is what companies like Drugstock, companies in the pharma tech space, companies in the health tech space are working towards. How do you leverage that technology to improve access? That's what we do. We provide end-to-end -end visibility for products going through the system. We enable uh, companies get um, 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 their products, their good quality products out there to starve off 
um, the, the counterfeit products that might may, may be in the market. We also make it easier for patients, providers, hospitals, pharmacists, doctors to be able to, you know, connect directly to, to the, the, these um, um, supply chains, enabling their patients to get the best quality products at the time that they need them, you know, without any hassles, not looking for every day, you know, the, there's a story of a patient that was looking for cancer medication and couldn't find that medication. Meanwhile, this medication is in somebody's warehouse somewhere getting expired. So using platforms like Drugstock, we're able to connect these patients to where the products that they need All right, Dr. can be brought to them at the right time. Yes? Let's talk more about um, the future of um, the pharmaceuticals uh, in Nigeria because uh, people in the hinterland still complain of um, getting you know, this uh, product you know, when they need them. How do you see the Nigerian pharmaceutical uh, industry? Where do you see them that is uh, in the next um, five years? Great question, Justin. So if you're going to look at the future, you know, it's, it's important to pay some, you know, some mind to what, what, what has been in the past, or at least what the current outlay is. Right now, you know, the logistics space, the infrastructure is, is, is a bit, you know, challenged with regards to getting things to the hinterlands. Um, you're going to have to leverage futuristic, interesting solutions, drone technologies, um, eco-platforms, um, you know, embedded financing solutions that enable people to access these products, you know, at the right cost in the ways that they can, they can, they, that they can, that, that can meet them at their, their needs, their points of needs. Take, for instance, we're working on a project in Calabar where we're able to deliver drugs that would normally take nine hours. We're able to do it in 15 minutes due to, due to a partnership with an innovative uh, drone technology solution that we've leveraged in that area to be able to do that. So these are some of the things that, you know, look into the future of, of serving healthcare that we're going to be able to um, um, create um, opportunities um, for, 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 for people to be able to um, get these products. In addition to, you know, opening up new markets, employing people, creating new jobs in, in these areas as these technologies create new um, 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 portals of access or new ways of doing healthcare business and providing people um, healthcare access that hitherto we would not have thought about it. I think the interesting thing is that in all areas of pharmaceuticals, technology is playing a huge part from developing the drugs to distributing the drugs to uh, tracking, tracing, um, recalling the drugs across the whole lifeline of the product. You see a lot of innovation, you know. Um, so quite excited. I think this is an exciting time um, to be in this space. A um, lot of opportunities. A lot of Nigeria has traditionally been challenged with a lot of um, um, obstacles with regards to uh, patients accessing the product, you know, for purchasing power and things like that. But I think with the strength of innovations that we see on the landscape, I think the future is bright for uh, for the next few years. Okay, as we round off now, just on a, on a quick note now, how do we uh, actually sort out the issue of pricing? Most times uh, the issue would be uh, getting the right drugs and getting the right quality, but another one is that of pricing. How do we begin to fix that particular challenge? Ooh, Justin, you keep giving me these uh, <laughs> very succinct questions. Pricing, pricing. Pricing is a very key thing that would uh, enable um, uh, patients, you know, access to, to, to pharmaceutical products. Um, the issue of pricing is myriad, right? Because from the, on the demand side, you have issues around um, affordability. You have issues around inability to pay, um, wages that are, are traditionally, and um, I think something like two thirds of the country or 70% or thereabouts live less than um, the regular um, um, the income standards that, that are used to benchmark countries around the world. And this is quite challenging, you get. At the same time, on the other side, um, there's a lot of investments that need to be done on the supply side to be able to improve and increase the distribution um, and all that. However, having said that, I think this is the age of, of deploying finance for, for it to work for people. 
you know, when people hear about financial solutions, they often term think about solutions around, you know, the pay stacks or the flutter waves or the fintech solutions that, that, that we see, the CUDA banks and all that. However, you know, there are so many financial technology revolutions that are occurring below the line, you know, embedded financing, secondary solutions, where businesses are able to take advantage of, you know, um, these credit opportunities, these uh, financial flows that are made to meet the, 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 the provider or the patient in their area of need, you know. And, and these solutions, I feel, right. you know, will go a long way to tackle some of these other things that, that need to be done, including right. improving insurance and things like that. All right, thank you so much, um, Chibuzok. But that's as much as we can take for time's sake. We must say a very big thank you uh, for sharing all of those thoughts with us as to how we can prove the supply chain issue of the pharmaceutical sector. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin. It was great to be here. It is indeed our pleasure. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Academia Business Insight returned again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>